Today we're gonna to talk about dodging and burning because this is truly the most common question I get asked. Everyone wants to know how you do it, what the methods are, can you do it in Lightroom, can you do it in Photoshop? And the answer is yes to all of those things. This is a technique that actually goes all the way back to Ansel Adams and traditional darkroom photography. It's the process of manipulating light the way you want to manipulate it. So how do we lighten areas and darken areas to really control the perspective of the photo? I use this technique a lot to draw focus to my focus areas and take away focus from areas that are less important. There's three different ways that we can do this. I have two methods that I use in Lightroom and just one in Photoshop. So let's get into it. Let's start with a quick and easy way that we can get that sort of dodge and burn effect in Lightroom. I'm going to slap on a preset. If you need a preset, I have a link down below for a free one and also a link to my professional preset packs. My preset has a few masks already, so I'm going to go ahead and reposition those before I start the Lumi range masks. When I create the mask, I'm going to use this dropper to select the shaded areas because I'm going to add some additional darkness to the shadows, which is going to give me that nice depth that I'm looking for. After I select the correct luminance range that I'm looking to target, I'm going to use the slider to kind of blur the edges of the selection. This is how I can see my selection and this is how I feather out my selection. If you don't have enough feathering, you're going to have a really harsh look. You can also check this box to better see what you're doing. For the actual settings of the mask, I'm just going to decrease the exposure and the shadows a little bit. I'm then going to click on these three dots, go to duplicate and invert. I can then tweak my selection. Then I'm going to add exposure, highlights, a little bit of warmth because light is warm, and maybe a little bit on the whites as well. The overall photo is looking a little bit too warm now, so I'm going to cool it off and let's look at a before and after. The pros of using this method is it's super fast and easy, it gives your photo a nice depth and contrast while still keeping things pretty soft, and it's kind of hard to mess up. You're not going to have as much control as you do if you're using a brush, so you'll have less ability to actually direct the person's eye that's looking at the photo. Also, if the photo has super harsh lighting, the masking will still be pretty harsh on this method. Let's move on to the second method of dodging and burning in Lightroom. This is probably my most used method. I love it. I'm going to create a mask with the overlay turned on, and this is going to be a brush with decreased shadows and exposure. The second method, in my opinion, is the best way to dodge and burn in Lightroom. When you're using brushing, you have full control over where the brush goes. You have full control over the feathering, the density, and I also love that you're able to layer the brushing really easily and make adjustments to it. As you can see here, I'm using the photo for guidance. A lot of times I'm just using the already shaded areas and kind of darkening them a little bit more, but there are other times when I go over even highlighted areas intentionally to kind of draw focus away from it since this is a shaded brush. I don't want people to be looking into the corners. I really want to draw the focus into the center of the photo, which is where I'm going to do a lot of my brightening. Let's take a quick look at where we started versus where we are now. Gorgeous. All right, let's keep going. I'm now going to make a highlight brush where I'm raising up the exposure, the highlights, the whites, warming it up, similar to the last settings that we used in the first method. And once again, I'm just using my photo as guidance. I'm going to areas that the light would naturally be hitting a little bit more and lightening them up. All the while, I am leaving my brush super feathered. I want the shadows and the highlights to kind of blend together. This gives me a really dreamy look in the photo. I'm also layering the brush intentionally on this left-hand side of the photo because this is where the light is coming from so I really want it to look almost like a hazy kind of glow coming in from the left hand side and although this is my favorite method this is also a method that I see done really badly and where people really overdo the brushing they spill it over areas that it doesn't look natural so make sure that you take a lot of feedback from the photo make sure you're not lighting up areas that really just wouldn't make sense you can see if you brighten it up too much it looks really bad so Remember that less is more and don't overdo it and it can look amazing once you practice. Let's do a quick comparison between the first and second method. I prefer the second method because it gives that sort of blended soft look. The first method though can still give some really good contrast so depending on how much time you have you can pick which one works better for you. The third method is in Photoshop using their tools that are literally called dodge and burn, so hard to miss. Um, these pre-made tools work a little bit differently than the ones that I actually manually create in Lightroom, so let's talk through how they work. The Lightroom brushes are just brushes that are going over the top of everything. These brushes, it requires you to select a luminance range, and the luminance range that you select is the only thing that will get affected by the brush. You can make that selection here at the top, and depending on what you choose will make the photo look very different. So I'll show you an example where I do shadows and highlights versus midtones. 
I'm using the same idea that I already showed you in the last method where I'm kind of picking and choosing the areas that I want to darken. However, you can see that when I have the shadows as the luminance range, it's really burning <laughs> the photo. Like it literally looks like it's burning it. It's making it more saturated. It's getting a little bit more orange. But if you actually change the method up and do it mid-tones, it, it looks very different. I'll go ahead and show the difference right now. The only thing that I've changed is the mid-tones up at the top. It was on shadows, now it's on mid-tones. You may have to mess around with the exposure level. You can see that I leave it extremely low. It's only at three right now, so I'm gonna raise it up a little bit and see how that looks. And you can already see. So now that weird kind of orange saturation that was happening is basically completely gone. And it's now just sort of darkening these areas, giving them a little bit of shadowing, which is what I wanted to do. Let's do a quick comparison of the shadow brush versus the mid-tone brush. Honestly, again, this is kind of personal preference. I prefer the mid-tones because they look a little bit more soft. I'm now switching over to the dodge tool. This is what you use to brighten and I have the highlight selected so you can see what that looks like. It really does really brighten and also kind of changes the coloring and saturation a little bit more than I would like. To show the contrast, I'm moving back over to my mid-tones layer so you can see what it looks like. I'm gonna change the exposure level a little bit and just paint over these highlighted areas similar to the way I did before. One thing to remember when you're dodging and burning is never do this directly on the background layer. Always keep the background layer intact because now if I want to change the opacity or you know kind of increase or decrease the entire dodge and burn layer, I can do that really easily. Let's do a quick recap. So this was the first method. This is really good if you don't have a ton of time and you wanna add some soft contrast. The second method is my favorite method because you have the ultimate control over what you're doing. If you prefer Photoshop, I do really like this last method as well. You have a lot of control still, the brushing works great, so honestly, it's really up to you on which one you prefer. As per usual, let me know if this is helpful. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.